What's going on everybody? I'm Peter Martin. Welcome to this week's Jazz Piano Method lesson. I'm excited to be here. I'm so pleased that you're here. This week we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to do Trade with Peter. And uh, my hope is that by going through some um, examples and exercises uh, of trading and sort of playing together virtually, that you'll have a chance to put into place and solidify some of the things that we've been working on over specific types of tunes, um, but just really improv ideas in general. Um, one of the challenges of becoming a better jazz player is always how do we take the things that we're learning from transcriptions or from you know, new harmonic conceptions that we learn through ear training, through new tunes, how do we put those into place and kind of codify them in a way that we feel good about them coming out in our playing? Because like I'm always saying, we want to get to the point where when we're playing and improvising and creating a, a solo, we're just telling our story in a very unconscious way. But it's like always in the back of your head, it's like, wait, is my hip new stuff going to come out? You know? So hopefully by doing some trading, by having some specific, um, relatively simple framework of some tunes in order to have somebody to play along with, you'll get a chance you know, to let that creativity come out, to sort of start to make it feel like it's second nature. I've talked about before, and it continues to be very important for us to practice performing every day even if that's just for five minutes, depending on how long you have to practice, you know, you can adjust this based upon your practice routine. But I like to do it at the end of the practice period or the end of the day, if you have several periods of practice, and that's just to play a tune that you're working on, but do it as a complete performance, right? So what we're gonna do today with some trading with each other is really gonna be somewhere between, you know, the more specific practice things that we do and the practicing performing. So this will be a chance to improvise, but within a trading framework. And we're gonna take, I've got four different tunes, um, and they all kind of represent four types of tunes. We're gonna do a blues first, then we're gonna do In Walk Bud, just because it's a fun tune, it's the AABA form, and I think it's a good one to trade on. Uh, of course, Thelonious Monk. We're gonna do a ballad, which is Body and Soul, and then we're gonna do Rhythm Changes. Uh, which you're going to just be, a, it's not even going to be a specific tune rhythm changes, it's going to be just a generic rhythm changes because that can apply to so many different tunes and then getting into a little bit more bebop um, vocabulary and language and improvisational ideas. So the idea with this is that um, I'm going to give you some ideas as we're trading that you can take parts of them or you can take all of them. We'll have the transcription there, so it's really up to you with that. Um, but that's kind of just one part of how you can practice this. Um, you could also practice by just responding to what I'm doing, like you're trading on a gig, which I think will be really fun, um, and going back and forth with that. That way, if you replay certain parts, the, the challenge for you will be, will be to come up with something different as you're trading with me. I'm going to be playing the same thing because it's recorded, but you're going to have the opportunity to use this as kind of a creative springboard for your practice. Um, so it won't be so different than if you're just practicing one of these tunes, practicing performing, or you're playing the tune, but there will be some difference in that I'm going to give you some bass line and some pads and stuff beneath where you can really concentrate on your melodic improvisation. So I would encourage you to, you know, at least some of the times just improvise with your right hand. If you're working on maybe some two-handed improvisation, you can do two hands, but I'm going to give you uh, pretty much everything you need in terms of accompaniment. So you can really concentrate on that melodic improvisation, telling your story within these specific, and you know, sometimes it's four bars, sometimes it's two bars, sometimes it's eight bars. I'm going to tell you what the trading is for each of the tunes, but it'll give you an idea to just simplify and isolate in your practice and just think about telling your story within this shorter framework. Sometimes we get overwhelmed when it's like, I've got to create a whole story. I'm practicing performing and I'm about to do my first gig after the lockdown and all this and it's like it can be very overwhelming you know so sometimes when we break it into these trading chunks four bars eight bars two bars a little bit of restrictions a little bit of guardrails for our, you know as we practice improvising it can be a great place and a great framework to really work on things so not to say that you can't comp in, in your left hand or play some roots or whatever you can but I want you to be concentrating on the melodic improvisation, because that's really what this is about, if that makes sense. Okay? So we're going to start with the G blues. And I'm going to give it at a nice, you know, nice kind of medium, almost medium slow tempo, because we got some other tempos coming, coming up. So we're going to have a variety. But the idea with this 
is we're going to be at a temple where we can really pay attention to the feel, how we're really delineating the swing groove, the bluesy flavor as we play. You know, we talk about this, the slower we play, the more uh, opportunity there is to really be able to identify and to hear the spacing, you know, the way that we phrase rhythmically. So it's like... triplets, those eighth notes, that spacing is very exposed. So this is a great opportunity to play simple things as you're improvising, as we're trading, but also if you like the feel of what I'm playing, to really be able to pick up on that. It's not just about imitating what I'm playing, although that'll be part of it, and you'll have the transcription there. But it's also taking some of the feel of the phrase, putting that with your simple melodic ideas, and really getting a chance to internalize that and to, to form some good habits with that. Okay? So this is going to be a G blues. Um, very simple stuff. We're going to do four bar trading. And the nice thing with trading over a blues is that it's cyclical in that it's 12 bars. So I play the first four bars. You're going to play the second four bars. I'm going to play the third four bars. And then with the top of the form, and then you're going to play four bars. So we're switching. You're getting a chance to play all of the different parts of the tune without us having to reverse it, if that makes sense. So I'm going to play uh, accompaniment, as I said. So you'll hear the space starting on the fifth bar. That's your time to jump in. We ready to go? One, two, one, two, three, four. I had a few choruses there. Hopefully you heard a little bit of um, a few little things I threw in there. I didn't want to tell you about them because part of the trading process kind of hearing that. Of course, you can go back. You'll be able to figure that out. But, you know, maybe the first time around you were able to kind of respond in real time because that's part about playing with people, listening to those bass lines, that kind of thing. Um, but there you go. That's the G Blues. A little bit of fun with that one. Next, we're going to go on to In Walked Bud. And of course, go back and rewind, do this one as many times as you want until you get tired of it or whatever. Pick up some of my phrases if you like, but really the feel on all of these, especially this, this first blues, and that's why I wanted to start with that, super important to really cop the feel, to be able to adopt as much of that feel as you can, both in terms of the way that I'm phrasing. It's not about just playing the ideas the way I, the, the ideas that I play. You can use that as a reference point. But I think what can be more powerful is using the feel. And hopefully, you know, I was able to continue that on as I was, you know, and I always look at you guys. That's your time to improvise, of course, when the, we're trading fours. But hopefully the feel carries through and you're able to pick up on that because that's how this kind of practice, practicing trading can be really powerful. That transfers the feel, the vibe, the groove between each of the trading as we go through these very simple melodic um, opportunities to improvise. All right, in walk bud, and we'll drop a, a link to the to the chart on this as well, just so we're on the same page in terms of improvising. We're gonna do eight bars um, on this one, and I'll look at you guys. Uh, hopefully, I'll remember each time. I think I will. Each time when it gets your chance to solo, because what I'd like to do, it's a 32 bar form. It's A A B A. Is we're gonna reverse things after two choruses. So we'll do two choruses where I play the first A, you play the second A, I play the bridge, 
you play the last day. We'll do that two times, and then I'm going to look at you, and we're going to reverse it. So you're going to actually have um, eight bars in a row at a certain point, because the third and fourth chorus, you're going to be starting, and then I'm going to be playing, so that you get an opportunity to play the bridge, okay? So four choruses of in, walk, butt. Here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four. But that's a fun one. Great tempo. Hopefully, you made the adjustment to that feel. Great opportunity to really work on your eighth note feel, phrasing, and all that kind of good stuff. All right, again, rewind, do as many times as you like. A little trading on Inwalk Bud. Next, we're going to do our ballad, which is Body and Soul. And on this, we're going to do two bars trading. Of course, it's a ballad tempo. So this, you know, we're going to have a similar amount of time, um, but we're going to need to sort of simplify um, as, as is very important for us to learn to do and to practice to do on ballads our melodic conception for this. Okay, so really take this as an opportunity still to be able to, you know, really feel like you can dive headfirst into, you know, swimming with this feel and the groove. You know, a lot of times on the ballads, it's like, oh, it's not as important as the hard swinging stuff. We can just get more nebulous. No, no, no. Feel is very important. So we're still doing that. But on a ballad, we've got so many, you know, opportunities with chords and stuff. Sometimes it's a, it's a great challenge to just play a great melodic single phrase without any chords or anything. So I'm going to give you everything you need in terms of accompaniment, and I challenge you at least some of the time when you're practicing this as we trade together to really concentrate, zone in on those single lines, put that left hand maybe on, on, under your butt so that, you know, you're just having to play with that right hand, okay? Then you can always go back and add some things, all right? I've got two bars, you have two bars. We're going to go all the way through the chorus, body and soul. 
One, two, three, four. How'd you do? That's a fun one, kind of two bars. And this can be a great thing um, if you're playing a duo. Um, and so this, of course, would be great practice for that. Um, I've done this before where it sort of organically led to this, like trading of twos over a ballad. And I'm always amazed that it's not done more, because to me, it's one of the most exciting and interesting and potentially you know, really edifying parts of the performance to trade twos. So this might give you a little bit of an idea for that. I mean, it could be two piano. Uh, four hands, vocals and piano, horn and piano, guitar, a lot of different situations. All right, here's our lap. Again, rewind, practice as many times as you like. Now we're going to move on to rhythm changes, our final of the four styles for trading with Peter. And of course, you know, this is like a hundred, a thousand tunes, whatever. Um, and we're going to do the real standard. Five to the four, six, two, five, one. The standard rhythm changes. D7, two bars, G7, C7, F7, as opposed to, you know, eternal triangle changes or, you know, crazyology or any of that. Okay, so this one we're gonna do four bars. This is a really good one, I think, for four bar trading. Um, and uh, again, I'm gonna give you all the accompaniments you need, and hopefully all the vibe that you need, the groove. So really try to hone in on some, you know. Four bar bebop phrases. This is a great chance to practice those, to bounce ideas off of what I'm playing, to come up with your own ideas, or just to use it as a, as a nice kind of play along situation. Okay, rhythm changes. I do four, then you do four. One, two, one, two, three, four.
led a couple choruses over rhythm changes there, and you'll notice I went to um, some single line improvisation on that last chorus a little bit. That's kind of an optional thing, but I think it, that's a fun thing to practice, and I really just wanted to give you an idea for that, that it's not always, um, and you know, this is when you're practicing trading or just practicing on your own. We don't have to always be bass lining or, or accompaniment. Break things up because that's something that you can really pull into your playing. So if I play a couple of courses where I'm really, you know, where I'm doing three zones. Maybe even some two-handed things, but like breaking it up can be such a great dramatic thing. So we can practice that in terms of trading, and it's also a fun thing to do trading if you ever do two piano gigs, um, because we always think we have to accompany each other, but actually if you do that for a while and then pull that out, keep that groove going, keep that form going, it can be a really exciting kind of dramatic thing that you put in there. So, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, let me know in the comments because I can do some more of these over a bunch of different tunes. I just sort of wanted to try this out because I had the idea the other day and thought it would be fun. So, hopefully this was useful for you. Again, rewind it. Pick the ones that you like, do as much as you want, but I really think that trading, practicing, practicing trading um, can be a great thing to, for, for developing and internalizing a lot of the um, improvisational ideas that we have and that we're working on um, in a fun way. All right? Happy practicing. Peace and piano.